Right, good afternoon and welcome to the Australian Federal Police New South Wales headquarters. I'm very pleased to be joined by the uh, Australian Federal Police State Commander of New South Wales, Commander Chris Sheehan, New South Wales Police Detective Chief Superintendent Ken Finch, Australian Border Force Regional Commander for New South Wales Tim Fitzgerald, and the Australian Crime Commission New South Wales State Manager Warren Gray. And we are here to laud the joint operation that has resulted in the largest seizure of liquid methamphetamine in Australia's history. This is also one of the largest drug seizures in our country's history. Uh, 720 litres of methamphetamine has been seized in a joint operation between the Australian Federal Police, the New South Wales Police, the Australian Border Force, the Australian Crime Commission and the New South Wales Crime Commission. This has resulted in 3.6 million individual hits of ice being taken off our streets with a street value of $1.26 billion. This largest seizure of liquid methamphetamine to date is a result of organised criminals um, targeting the lucrative Australian ice market from offshore. And very importantly, the operation has been informed by the very successful efforts of the Australian Federal Police and Chinese Narcotic Control Commission Joint Operation Task Force Blaze that we established in November last year, specifically to target the international ice smuggling market. This joint operation today shows how successful our law enforcement agencies are in tackling the organised criminal gangs that peddle in the misery of ice. It also comes on the back of the last two months of very successful operations of the Australian Federal Police in conjunction with their law enforcement partners that have taken one tonne of illicit drugs off the streets in 11 uh, individual operations. Whilst Australians though continue to have such an appetite for this mind destroying drug of ice, organised criminal gangs will continue to target the Australian market because of its lucrative nature. But they need to be aware that our law enforcement agencies are the best in the world and we are successfully targeting the organised criminal gangs that seek to trade off the misery of ICE. The law enforcement efforts complement the efforts that we've made on the demand side as well, the $300 million investment that we've made in drug rehabilitation as a result of the recommendations of the National ICE Action Task Force. This task force, headed up by former Police Commissioner Ken Lay, gave advice to the government about the sorts of things that we need to be doing. And last December, the Prime Minister, Minister Nash and I, announced the Commonwealth Government's national response. I would like to thank our law enforcement agencies for their professionalism and diligence in this very significant drug seizure. This is a devastating blow for the organised criminal gangs that peddle in ice, and it shows you that if you do target the Australian market, we will have the powers and the resources to prosecute you. In this case, because of the large quantity of these drugs, and the people involved could be in prison for life. We will continue those efforts I uh, congratulate all of the agencies involved in this very significant seizure today. I'd like to hand over to Father Christine to say some more about the operational aspects of this, of this joint operation. Thank you, Minister, and uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Commander Christine. I'm the State Manager for the AFP here in New South Wales. I'd like to echo the Minister's comments that this is a great result for the Australian community and it reflects a reflective Australian law enforcement effort and commitment to combating organised crime and drug trafficking. As the Minister stated, the Joint Organised Crime Group comprising the Australian Federal Police, the New South Wales Police, the Australian Border Force, the Australian Crime Commission and the New South Wales Crime Commission have seized 720 litres of liquid methamphetamine. The Joint Organised Crime Group operation began in December last year when the Australian Border Force examined a shipping container out of Hong Kong. That shipping container was found to contain gel bra inserts hidden inside those gel bra inserts was 190 litres of liquid methamphetamine. And uh, some of the uh, examples of those gel bra inserts are on the table next to me. The seizure was referred to the Australian Federal Police by the Australian Border Force and an investigation was commenced by, by the Joint Organised Crime Group. During the investigation, an additional 530 litres of liquid methamphetamine was located by Joint Organised Crime Group investigators. These drugs were concealed inside art supplies housed in five storage units in Sydney, in the suburbs of Miranda, Hurstville, Padstow, and
and Kingsgrove. In January this year, the Joint Organised Crime Group conducted a controlled operation, resulting in the, in the arrest of a 33-year-old Hong Kong national. He was charged in relation to the original uh, seizure of the drugs by the Border Force. A further three Hong Kong nationals, a 59-year-old man, a 37-year-old man, and a 52-year-old woman were arrested and charged in relation to the drugs located in the storage facility. The 720 litres of liquid methamphetamine seized could produce up to 504 uh, kilograms of high quality crystal methamphetamine or ice. As the Minister mentioned, this is just one in a series of seizures the AFP and its partner agencies, in particular the Border Force and the New South Wales Police Force, have made since Christmas. That equates to over a tonne of drugs prevented from entering the community. The work over this time clearly shows that the partnerships we have are working and that they reap benefits for our community. Thank you, and I'll hand over to um, Mr Fitzgerald from the Australian Police. Thanks, Commander Shane. Uh, Tim Fitzgerald, the Regional Commander for the Australian Border Force here in New South Wales. I'm just going to provide some background around the initial referral and subsequent seizure of the 700 litres of liquid methamphetamine. So on the 9th of November last year, Australian Border Force officers at Sydney Airport referred to the Joint Organised Crime Group, a Hong Kong national, that they identified as being high risk and entering into the Australian community. This referral was accepted by the Joint Organised Crime Group and further investigation by that group identified two other individuals that were considered to be high risk. On the 4th of January, a sea cargo container was examined at our Sydney cargo examination facility this container originated from China and the goods declared in that container were gel bar inserts. As a result of the examination, approximately 195 litres of liquid methamphetamine was detected concealed within the gel bar inserts. As a result of some further intelligence that was provided, um, officers at Sydney Airport identified a number of self-storage units within the southern suburbs of Sydney that they considered to be high risk and again, those particular self-storage units were referred to the Joint Organised Crime Group. Um, short parties from international narcotic syndicates, and this is what this particular individual was, who was part of a short party, continue to po pose a significant threat to the Australian community. Um, the key to success in this particular operation was the skill of the Border Force Officer at Sydney Airport that identified the high-risk passenger. In some instances, it's not always about the passenger standing in front of you with a quantity of narcotics concealed with them. It's about the risk that that passenger potentially poses beyond the border as well. I'll just hand over to uh, Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Detective Chief Superintendent Ken Finch, Director of Organised Crime, New South Wales Police Force. Uh, we are uh, New South Wales Police Force engaged in the Joint Organised Crime Group. Uh, we're very pleased to be uh, a member of that. We work uh, very cooperatively with our partner agencies, as has been indicated here this morning. But um, as the Minister said, uh, we're here to board the efforts of the police and, and other personnel involved in this investigation. Um, we are indebted to them. Uh, the evidence is here before you, or at least part of the evidence is here before you. The scourge of ice is just that. The dedication and hard work of those individuals involved in this investigation has prevented uh, large amounts of ice getting onto the streets and destroying the lives uh, of many. Uh, it's all been said operationally, uh, and that's uh, all that we would like to say to you. So I'd like to thank you. Well, as you can see, this has been a very good day for Australian law enforcement and a very bad day for the organised criminals that are targeting the Australian government. We're very happy to take questions uh, on the operational side of the security with my colleagues, but um, I'm going to take questions on this one. So. Um, the 7th of January, you know, we've had uh, one, over one billion dollars. Uh, in January, there was an NRC and the AFP said it was 159 kilos of ice is worth 106 million dollars. Can you explain how, if it's um, this amount of liquid is going to make 504 kilos of high quality ice, how that one billion dollar figure is worth? Uh, well, I might defer to my colleagues on that question. Thanks, Minister, and thanks for the question. Uh, I guess the first point I'd make is that um, regardless of the value, once once we have seized the drugs, they're essentially valueless because they will never, ever, ever be lost profit for organised crime. Um, in 
terms of the, the computation of, of values, um, there are a number of different ways they can be calculated. Typically what the AFP relies upon is the ACC's whistle data report. Um, now that data report comes out uh, annually and um, obviously the, the values change over time. Um, the particular value of this shipment has been calculated on the basis of its value sold at a street level, um, which at that at that level, a kilogram of um, methamphetamine can be broken down to 0.1 gram meals at points and sold at that value. Now calculating out from there brings us to a 1.26. successful uh, law enforcement investigations into um, serious organised crime groups. And these serious organised crime groups, uh, in this particular case, were trafficking in narcotics and drugs. But what we have learned is that they will traffic in any illicit commodity to generate profit. Uh, seizing the drugs and taking them off the street is satisfying, but the, the real um, success and the real impact of what we do is achieved when we uh, arrest, disrupt, dismantle and hold the individuals who are part of those networks to account and disrupt their networks so they can't just target Australians, but uh, their impact on the global economy and global communities is, uh, is reduced. So it's not just about the drugs, it's about the people as well. Are you confident you that you have disrupted this particular syndicate? Very, very confident. Um, we are alleging and um, that, that the people that we have arrested weren't just mere bit players, they were significant players within this criminal network. I think it's important to go back to the Minister's comment as well around the relationship with the Chinese National Narcotics Control Commission. Uh, that gives us a capability now to not just target those members of the syndicate that come to Australia to commit offences, but also gives us the ability to go back to the point of origin where we believe to be the point of origin in other countries, target the drugs and the networks at their source. Can you tell us about the sophistication of this, um, this operation and perhaps the concealment as well? Uh, I'll, I'll speak briefly about the concealment and then I might um, give Mr Fitzgerald a chance to talk about that as well. Uh, I, I guess what I would say about the method of concealment, uh, both in the gel bra inserts and in the art supplies, is it proves the point that those of us in law enforcement uh, have known for a long time, that is that organised crime are uh, incredibly creative in terms of how they seek to move illicit commodities, including drugs, around the world. Uh, no product uh, is, is uh, immune from, from their planning and their ability to uh, bring their drugs, bring their drugs into or introduce their drugs into it. In, re in regard to this specific uh, shipment, I might ask um, Mr. Fitzgerald to talk about that. Just in general terms, I think it's fair to say. So, last year alone, the Australian Border Force intercepted 7.2 tonnes of narcotics at our borders. A significant proportion of that related to uh, ice or crystal meth. We have noticed a trend in recent times where syndicates will use liquids to conceal um, methamphetamine. So whether it's as a gel insert, whether it's within the wine bottles, um, but it certainly is a method of concealment that the syndicates are attempting to use to import their uh, drugs. The three men and the woman who are sharply charged, where are they at? Um, they have uh, they have appeared before court and their processes are currently currently underway. Require specific information about the individuals, I'll be happy to talk to you. What sort of charges are they facing? They're all facing um, charges around the commercial importation and uh, conspiracy to import commercial products for controlled drugs. Uh, they carry a, a uh, life imprisonment. Yeah. The, um, the vast majority of these drugs are tested from Chinese and Indian countries. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Yeah.